Welcome, market participants, to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hesser, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week, we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. We're wrapping up another phenomenally busy week in credit markets, where 48 corporate bond deals were priced in 48 hours, according to one Bloomberg headline. In August, just to pour a bit more salt on the wound, I saw a story where issuers should feel comfortable bringing deals because the success of work from home means investors can just as easily work from vacation. There's nowhere to hide. All right, let's get started. This week, our three things are, one, the housing market is moving from super hot to super warm. As housing goes, so goes the economy. Two, small business optimism has taken a turn for the worse. We'll explore what's behind it and why this matters. And three, Democrats plan to tie Biden's $3.5 trillion human infrastructure bill to the $1 trillion traditional infrastructure bill risks more than just the traditional infrastructure bill. We'll explain. All right, let's dig a bit deeper. So we were struck by the characterization of the housing market this week by Lawrence Yoon. He's the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors, who said in his latest report that the housing market is moving from super hot to warm as price gains are expected to be, quote, markedly slower, unquote. This comes as welcome relief to prospective home buyers, not to mention anxious central bankers, which have faced surging home prices driven by super low borrowing rates and the growing need to work from home. As we have talked in the past, we have been less concerned about this price spike than the one we saw leading up to the GFC, as this latest rise is a function of lack of supply and a secular shift in demand, rather than dangerously misguided incentives that led to widespread irresponsible lending. Correction in the former should come from market forces over time, far more preferable than what corrected the latter, a financial crisis and massive government bailout. Now, those market forces are in evidence this go-around as rapidly weakening affordability has brought about rising housing starts and increased listings by opportunistic sellers. Pending home sales fell 1.9% in June, the fourth monthly drop out of six this year. Overall, sales are 13% lower than the pandemic-era high set back in August of 2020. Active listings in the four weeks ended August 1st, were 13% higher than the recent low set back in March, according to Redfin. Home prices have yet to cool, with the median single-family existing home price rising 23% year-over-year in Q2 to a record of nearly 360000 But recent survey data around consumer sentiment, most notably out of the University of Michigan, indicated that attitudes towards buying a new home have cooled considerably. That strikes us as evidence that market forces are at work correcting the housing market. And we believe there is useful read across from what is happening in the housing market to what is happening broadly throughout the economy. Markets for all sorts of things have been distorted by inflated, whoops, didn't mean to use that word, inflated consumer spending fueled directly and indirectly by massive fiscal stimulus and a super accommodative Fed. As those distortions wear off over the next year or so, look for markets in all sorts of goods and services to correct. That process, in turn, is likely to dampen consumer and commercial sentiment, which is a headwind for economic growth, corporate earnings, and asset values. All right, on to our second thing, taking the temperature of small business. We care about small business because that tends to be where significant job creation and innovation happens. So we pay attention to the National Federation of Independent Business Survey each month something that has become especially important given the disproportionate vulnerability small business bears in the face of pandemic, and it's important to the maximum employment goal of the Fed. The NFIB Small Business Optimism Index, kind of an all-encompassing marker, missed its estimate in July, falling from 102.5 in June to 99.7 versus the estimate of 102.5. For context, note that the pre-pandemic, the index averaged 102.7 in 2019, and it was as high as 104 in October of 2020. Small business owners are losing confidence in the strength of the economy and expect a slowdown in job creation, said NFIB chief economist Bill Dunkelberg. 
Frustrations with supply chain bottlenecks and qualified labor availability, recurring themes you hear from just about every labor-intensive business, are plainly evident. Some 49% of small businesses reported job openings they could not fill, a 48-year high. Those planning on making capital expenditures remain below historic levels. The share of firms expecting the economy to improve fell to minus 20%, right about the level hit in the depths of the GFC. So all in all, not the brightest picture coming out of the small business sector of the economy. We see this in the equity markets, where the Russell 2000 has been flat for all intents and purposes in 2021, having peaked all the way back in March. For the U.S. economy to achieve its soft landing in the Great Deceleration, a relatively optimistic and vibrant small business sector is a must. All right, on to our third thing, Biden's bold reach to strengthen human infrastructure. Who doesn't love infrastructure? Even Mitch McConnell voted yes on the Senate's bipartisan $1 trillion bill, noting that infrastructure improvements are, in his words, desperately needed. We would agree, and infra's multiplier effects are far more powerful economically than dropping helicopter money. But because this is Washington we're talking about, this is not a case of simply delivering what the American people need. Everything, it seems, is about posturing. Posturing for next year's midterms, in 2024's presidential election. And to that end, this is really about Biden pushing through his far more ambitious, far more divisive $3.5 trillion so-called human infrastructure plan that is a laundry list of Democratic goals to be paid for by significant wealth redistribution. Needless to say, there is all sorts of gamesmanship that will ensue as the $1 trillion bill moves through the legislative process, including the possibility that the $1 trillion bill could be held hostage to the $3.5 trillion bill, which could be passed along party lines through the budget reconciliation process. What could go wrong? Well, a lot of things. Steering clear of a values-based discussion, we have no interest in that. We're worried about government functioning in a pragmatic way to solve problems. That now seems like a distant memory of another time. What we're worried about is a dysfunctional government gummed up by ideologues that becomes a headwind to economic soft landing post-COVID. What's at stake is not just desperately needed investment in roads, bridges, waterways, and broadband, but our standing as the safest haven among the world's leading economies. We need to lead to set the example for the world this government can, well, govern. First order of business is the fiscal cliff which we are rapidly approaching, something that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has been warning about, speaking usually in terms of financial collapse for months. Mitch McConnell has already dug in, saying that Republicans shouldn't help Democrats raise the debt ceiling. And a Bloomberg piece out this week said risks of a major disruption in U.S. government spending and payments escalated sharply as Democrats signaled they would force, never a good word in politics, Republicans into a showdown on the debt ceiling. So much for America first. Do we think government shutdown is anything but a tail risk? No, but material shifts in financial market valuations tend to have a catalyzing event or transaction. And we wonder if Biden's $3.5 trillion nod to the progressive wing of his party and the Republican reaction will be such an episode. Already there are reports that the threat of shutdown is affecting demand in the Treasury market. Traders are focused on the so-called X date of October 15th, the estimated day when the Treasury exhausts its borrowing capacity. You can bet that this will be an ideological fight down to the wire, and that tail risk is likely to widen along the way. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, the housing market is moving from super hot to warm. It's a good proxy for what's ahead for the broader economy. Two, small business optimism has taken a turn for the worse. We bet Jay Powell has noticed. And three, Democrats plan to push Biden's $3.5 trillion human infrastructure bill through reconciliation is bound to upset markets at some point. As always... Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest rating reports and research.
we'll see you next week. Thank you.